So at the moment, it looks like everything's moving along nicely, but we do have a bit of a security issue here. And that is that everybody would be logging in with the root user. Now the root user has full control of the system. So we don't want everybody being able to log in with just the root user account. But luckily for us, we do have an option and that is to configure login classes. Now login classes can define different users to have different privilege levels for whatever they want to do on the actual device. So let's try and jump back onto our system here. CLI, maybe if I just expand it a bit here. And you can see that I've logged in with root. Now to actually configure a user, what I can say is edit, is it edit system? I think edit system login. And then I can say set user Ibrahim. I'll give him a UID of 2002. And what I could also do, I can define um, what privileges this user Ibrahim will have when he actually logs into the system. So set user, I was going to say edit user Ibrahim, then I won't have to put set user Ibrahim every time, but no worries. Let's say the class. And there are four default classes that will classify the user. And when I say classify the user, it's basically what commands they'll be allowed to do on the actual device. So you can make a unique login class, or you could use the operated login class, which will give you um, the option to run the clear network research trace or view commands. This view means like show commands. You could have a read only where they are only going to be able to run show commands. You could have the super user. Now the super user has the same privilege level as the root user, allowing them to do all commands. Or you could have an unauthorized user where they won't be able to run any commands at all. We're going to have Ibrahim as a super user, if we run everything. And then we need to set a password for this actual user. So set user Ibrahim authentication. And again, we've got quite a few options of authentication. I'm gonna run a plain text password. So plain text password, add my password. And what you find is that when I was doing this here, I was actually, say, if I say set user and I type IB, if I press the tab, it does an autocomplete. And I could also do the same if it's unique. If I do IB and I press space, oh, that didn't work. So maybe only tab for this if it's not a actual Juniper command. So let me say A-U-T-H and press space. Yeah, it does the autocomplete there. So space and tab are slightly different. The tab always autocompletes. And it seems that the space will only autocomplete if it's a Juniper command. So I will also see what the um, difference in the configuration is. So if I do a show, and then this is a pipe. Now this pipe command is very powerful. It allows you to pass some of the configuration. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you wanna know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. So you see that all of these options you can run after a pipe. If I was just to say show here, or maybe I could say top show, show from the top of the configuration, we see that's a lot of configuration that we'd have to go through just to see the part that we want. But if I say show compare underneath the hierarchy, it will just show us the differences. And I done show COMP and then just press tab to complete. And any of these pluses is what will be added to the configuration. So user Ibrahim is going to be added. They've got a unique identifier of 2002. They're going to be having a super class as a user. Authentication. Now you see that I put in a plain text password, but the Junos OS automatically encrypts the password. Excellent. And then we, to save the configuration, we say commit. Now, if we didn't want to save on configuration, we would say roll back, but I, I do want to save it. I press tab here. Oh, didn't like it. Anyway, let's not mess around with that for the moment. We could do the rollback command a bit later on. 
At the moment, I want to commit and see the options at the end. We have commit, activate, um, commit and quit, quit out of configuration mode. We have commit at, which will do a commit at a certain time. We can check the configuration with the commit check. There's quite a few bits there. Um, commit confirmed, which will automatically roll back if it's not confirmed. Excellent. What I want to do is a commit comment. And what this will do, I will put a comment underneath the commit stanza. So if I do a run show commit after this, it will do a comment to see um, where in that set of configurations this particular configuration is. So as a comment, I'm going to say commit comment as created user Ibrahim. Close the speech marks, press enter. And that should be committed now. And the way that we could test this, if we just say from the top to press top, takes us back to the top of the hierarchy, which is just the edit command. And if I say run show system commit, we see the comment here under this commit stanza. So you could have up to 50 of these commits um, from zero to 49 and maybe they were like six months ago. So you can't remember exactly which one is the configuration that you're looking for. So if you add comments to each time you commit, it will be a lot easier for you to say, oh yeah, this is when I created the user Ibrahim or so on and so forth. Okay. So there's just a couple of other things that I want to show you here. So if I go up, if you do a control A, I'm pressing control and A. It takes us to the start of the line. If you do like a control E, it takes us to the end of the line, rather than you having to just backspace, backspace, backspace all along. And I'm just showing you the ones that I use. So I always use like control A, take me to the front of the line, control E, take me to the end of the line. But there's two new ones that I've seen recently that I'm gonna try and remember for the future. So you can do a control and P, it takes you to the previous command and control and N will take you to the next command. Um, these are ones that I'm going to try and remember. So just to have a quick recap, you can press space or tab to complete um, a word. You could do control A to take you to the front of the line. You could do control E to take you to the end of the line. Control P for the previous command. Control N for the next command. And then you could use a pipe and you could actually use multiple pipes to pass some of the configuration. All right, that's it for this part. I'll see you in the next section. Okay, it's question time. Question one, what's the difference in privilege level between the root user and the super user? Question two, which command gave us the following output? Question three, what does the commit comment command do? Question four, how many configuration commits are stored on the device? Question five, if you were to see the word amnesiac at the login prompt, what does this mean? Question six, what does control plus P do?